Stand by. It's interview time. Well, thank you, Spungle, for uh, <laughs> taking us <this> off <laughs> the David Helpling session. But not speaking of Spungles, how are you there, David Helpling? Yes, I am, Terry. How are you? <laughs> We're fine, Lady Hawk and I. We're okay. We're just enjoying a, a lovely balm, balming evening. Not a balmy evening, but it's lovely, uh, mild. At, uh, yeah, it is. <laughs> most un- <laughs> That's we are balmy. Who knows, uh, David? But uh, <laughs> you, you two are always in such a great mood, and you're so jolly. Uh, thanks for having me back on the show. It's a real honor. Mm. Oh, it's good to have you back. And, uh, well, we're going to be a little bit busy, I think, tonight, because we've got uh, seven tracks we're going to be playing, and the usual thing is a little story behind it. But um, even so, do you want to give the listeners a little brief overview of your illustrious career and musicians and who brought you up and Mm -hmm. who dragged you down whatever it is (laughs) please david (laughs) oh where shall i start (laughs) (laughs) at the beginning (laughs) hey (laughs) when he was 12 Uh, you know (laughs) well you know i've been playing music ever since i was a kid and in high school and i've been experimenting with uh making really strange sounds with uh electric guitars and and all of that since i was a teenager and I was lucky enough to uh, meet some wonderful people at an incredible record label. And here we are five, um, almost six albums later, um, still going strong. <laughs> wow. It, uh, you just certainly found the right people found you, didn't they, David? You know, or discovered yeah, we you. Sort of, <laughs> sort of found each other. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know you did a lot of work with uh, fellow musician John Jenkins. So... When did you uh, and John meet up? And of course, I met you both, didn't I, at, uh, at a meet up breakfast last year? But uh, enough that of the breakfast. Yeah. To, uh, <laughs> it was yeah. wonderful to get to spend some time face to face with you. That was, that was a good time for sure. Good, good, good. And absolutely, both of you. And yes, how did you meet up with uh, dear John? <laughs> well, John, John Jenkins is actually my best friend oh. and uh, my. Uh, lifelong collaborative partner and I think uh, we bring out the best of each other musically and otherwise but uh, he he is one of the owners of Spotted Peckery Music, the record label so uh, when I was signed to the label in 94, right before my first record, Between Green and Blue um, I was acquainted with him and and we had a lot of uh, things in common and you know, I, I stayed in touch with him in, in communication, and it wasn't until uh, I think it was the year 2000 when we were asked to officially work together on a film score. So that was our first time in oh, the wow. studio together creating music for a, a feature film. Hmm. What, what was that movie? What was the film? Um, God, I'm sorry. It, it, uh, I, I'm blanking on it right now, but oh, False Summit. Oh, right. Oh, right. <laughs> Hmm. Wonderful film by an incredible director in Los Angeles who we're still friends with to this day, Chris Cummings. No. Um, so no. he brought us together and we we really hit it off. And during the sessions for that film score, we started coming up with all this music that was really interesting but not necessarily appropriate for the film. So that's, that's uh-huh. where Treasure started. Aha. Uh-huh. Well, speaking of treasures, we're moving on <laughs> to talk about... One of your um, earlier albums, which is Sleeping on the Edge of the World, and Sticks and Stones. We'll have a little listen to Sticks and Stones, then we'll talk about Sticks and Stones, we'll break my bones, but here we go. Let's have a listen. There you go, David. Modern technology, you can't <laughs> beat it, can you? It just wants to do what it wanted to do. How dare it? Well, you know what? You found the track eventually. So <laughs> <it's pretty good. laughs> but I put it on that track already, but never mind. So I'm going to give that computer, or at least that 
CD player, some sticks and stones for certain. But uh, <laughs> anyway, sticks yep. and stones, please, David. Tell it this far. <laughs> What's the story behind the track, uh, David? Uh, well, it was it's it's one of the very few songs on Sleeping in the Edge of the World that is guitar centric, and mm. it really all started with the guitar chords and the and the progression, and and it uh it developed from there. Uh, mm. Did you want to know the story about the title or the music or? What? Oh yes, totally. Yes. Sticks, sticks and stones to me is a is a little nursery uh, rhyme I, way back. But. Yeah, it was just the, the the title and the music was um, a compassionate response to violence. Oh uh, right, yeah. Uh, yeah. And not too many people know that, but there's just a lot of cruelty and and really bad things going on that I that I you know couldn't unsee at the time, and yeah. sticks and stones was a way of saying. You know, just like the old adage goes that you were talking yeah. about. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. So. That's right. So it's uh, that's what that's about. Mm. Okay, we're going to listen to Shadows of Far Night now. Let's have a little listen. Now, don't play up computer. <laughs> don't play up CD player. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds a little bit spooky and dark. I suppose that's what was behind it, no doubt, David. Um, yeah, I, 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 ne I haven't had anyone refer to it as spooky, but it is powerful. <laughs> it is powerful and um, epic, and it, it's one of those pieces of music that just came to me and, and was a fun uh, expression of that type of energy. Um, to me, it was uh, wondrous and epic and and mm. more of a journey song than uh, than anything dark and spooky, but it, it's a fun it's a fun emotion and a fun musical feel to play in for me. So you know that that kind of a feel is never uh, missing from the record for sure. No, most definitely, shadows of far night. Now, what about the next track we're going to hear, which is uh, from your forthcoming? Digital only album, a sea without ah. a memory. Mm, what's behind the actual concept of that? But we'll have a little listen to this track. Let's have a little listen to it. Here we go. Look for the warming. Sure. Here we go. So what's behind this fabulous uh, forthcoming digital only album, A Sea Without Memory? Well, uh, A Sea Without Memory is my first guitar only release. Mm -hmm. So it's, uh, it's new territory for me a little bit. And uh, I'm not sure if, if your listeners are familiar with the Sunday loops that I produce mm -hmm. every Sunday. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But uh, the, the short story is I, I create a, an ambient guitar loop every Sunday evening mm -hmm. and pair it with um, visuals, you know, landscape visuals, HD visuals, often from an amazing cinematographer named Sean Malone. And I just put oh, yeah. those up on YouTube as a gift for people every Sunday night. Mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. that's been going on since um, fall of last year, every Sunday and uh, there's been a lot oh. of response and a lot of people mm -hmm. messaging and emailing wanting to know if they could get that music or if it's going to be put out on an album. <laughs> so mm -hmm. uh, I'm working directly with, again, John Jenkins. We produced a 
completely new reimagining of the idea of an ambient guitar record. And it will be released everywhere on July 7th. You're the first one to play it. Oh, <laughs> and I think we're very honored because you've called them the Hawk version, too. Mm. So. That's right. Oh, Lovely. Yeah. We are very, very yeah. honored. Let's listen to a little bit more of this. I like uh, the warming. Here we go. sort of drifting but uh, on the other hand it, it, it there's some lovely warm vibes or at least I can feel it and Lady Hawks lay shaking her head yes she, she yes, agrees I'm so, uh, nodding I'm what, not shaking what do we know yes <laughs> sorry dear. Yes, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you're well, certainly it's okay you're very welcome the warming I like it yeah. now what about the next one Beyond Self Mm, another quite a deep track, so um, let's have a little listen to that one, and we'll have a talk about the beyond self, maybe self-control, who knows? <laughs> David, did you want the listener to go beyond themselves or what's the story behind this track? Very deep, I'm sure. The story behind the entire release is uh, autobiographical fiction, if that makes any uh, sense. Yes, um, yeah. the, the, the release is intended to be listened to from beginning to end. It's, it's a continuous listen, so yeah. there aren't, uh, it doesn't go to black between the tracks. And it, mm. it's part of a, a journey that takes place in one night from uh, sunset to dawn. <laughs> and uh, the warming and beyond self is a, a self-realization that happens um, in the beginning of the experience before things um, get dark and go to the people. Oh, mm. right. Oh, that's too deep for me. It's too, uh, too, too deep. <laughs> but... <laughs> <laughs> so what about the next track we're going to hear? Uh, very shortly, it'll be uh, Flowing Lights. So do you want to introduce it? Well, very intriguing title. So what's behind Flowing Lights? Well, well, as I mentioned earlier, Sean Malone, who is an incredible cinematographer, has collaborated with me on many of the Sunday Loops, and she's actually done a couple of music videos for myself and John Jenkins oh. and uh, a lot of what she does happens in Lake Superior her company is called Lake Superior Photo and a lot of her cinematography is the Aurora Borealis the Northern Light <laughs> yes, yeah. so uh, Flowing Light is a, a rather plain description of the experience that happens to oh. this person who witnesses these Flowing Lights and Flowing Lights is near the end of the experience. Oh. Uh, it's a little more profound. I don't know if uh, you'll hear it, but that's the story behind what I'm like. Well, we'll have a little listen to it and see if uh, we'll try not to go too far away. Here we go. Hey.
I'm sure these tracks are uh, really keying up the listener to, uh, <laughs> to find out <laughs> more on when it's being released, etc. And uh, where can people find a little bit more either about yourself or about this album, forthcoming album, please, uh, David? Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, did you ask where they could find out about it? Yes, well, they could, uh, yeah. Well, they can find out more yeah. about this forthcoming album. And, of course, we'll talk about your new album, but I'll let you do that. Yes, of course. Well, that's another thing. But, uh, <laughs> the, easiest, yeah. the easiest place to go is a sea without memory. Um, sea as an ocean. So a sea without memory dot com right. will tell you everything you need to know about the release and where you can get it. This is a digital only release, so it's downloadable in multiple formats. It will also be on iTunes and Amazon and all that other stuff and all of your favorite streaming platforms. Mm -hmm. And that will all be out. Mm -hmm. July 7th. And oh, this is my first release since um, Sound in 2013 with John Jenkins. So it's been oh, wow, almost yes. four years. So it's cool. kind of a big deal. Well, I'm sure that um, once you put it on, you've just got to listen to it all the way through, haven't you, David? Indeed. Indeed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But now mm -hmm. I do know mm -hmm. that um, you have got a another album or album that uh, is currently being worked on. Could you let the listeners know a little bit about that or is it still a top secret? Um, it's not top secret. The title <laughs> is top secret. Oh. <laughs> yeah. This big album that I've been working on is a direct follow-up to 1999's Sleeping on the Edge of the World. Ah, okay. And it, it has been in the works um, since that time, almost 18 years. Uh, several of the ideas on this new record go back to as far as when I was working on Between Green and Blue and uh, you know about the other half of the ideas happened during the trilogy with John Jenkins and mm. since the release of Sound so it's a lot of new exciting music and it's mm. a very ambitious project I've never done anything of this scale um, mm. and with this this many sounds and these types of sounds and uh, i'm really excited about it so this release will be out sometime next year to be announced mm. but right now i'm just uh focusing on getting this guitar album out and, and yeah. sharing sort of this uh meditative guitar style thing and, mm. uh, and enjoying that for a little bit that sounds uh, delightful well Speaking of performances, have you got any live performances lined up for the rest of the year, do you think, or anything in England? I do not. Oh, you don't? Well, I'd love to come to England, <laughs> and I certainly <laughs> will, at, I will at some point. I have a lot of people there that I'd love to visit and, and to visit yeah. the country for the first time. Um, I don't have any performances lined up. I think, as you know, I don't do a lot of yeah. touring or live performance. Mm -hmm. The only touring I've really done was with John Jenkins for the Treasure Tour, and uh, we did the, the live show at the ZMR Awards. Which oh, of course, yes. Yeah. But uh, who knows? The, the future is open. We'll see. <laughs> the future, you, nobody really knows the future, you know. What do they? I don't know. But uh, anyway, <laughs> <laughs> if you could, but if you could perform anywhere on Earth, where would that be and uh, do you have do you have a favorite place where you would love to perform or have performed at before you know terry the last time i was on your show you asked me this question <laughs> <laughs> and uh my answer is the same if if i could perform anywhere as a dream performance it would be red rock in colorado <laughs> <laughs> oh. um, and it, it, it was a legendary u2 concert um one of the one of the musicians and artists that inspired me is David Evans, The Edge. So that Aww. that is just a magical venue, and I would love to perform that. Oh, I bet you would. Right. Okay, well, I'll let you take a little breather now. We're going to push up a track called Loss of Words from the album Between Green and Blue. Let's have a little listen. Have a sip of Jack Daniels. Off you go, to. <laughs>
So this is a loss of words from the album Between Green and Blue. Now, as I know, you and I were never short of sort of words. What's the secret behind this track? It's almost very meditative as well, David. <laughs> yeah, um, Lost of Words was the first time I ever created music that was non-percussive. Um, it's, it's all flowing. And actually, Lost of Words is the, the only song I've ever released that is all ambient guitar. Of mm. course, until July 7th when the new record comes out. Mm-hmm. Mm. Uh, yeah, Lost of Words is my first time ever um, taking this technique and creating a full-length song back in mm. 1995. Oh, way, 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 way back. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're going to listen to uh, uh, the final selection, which is not what I call the up-tempo track. It's called The Blue Sun. Let's have a little listen to The Blue Sun from Between Green and Blue. HFM. We're proud to be local and global and we're interviewing David Helpling and we're going to ask him have you ever seen a blue sun? Was it after some uh, astro (laughs) what you spotted David or what? No I've never seen a blue sun myself that's a good question but no no Uh, the sun title just sounds like it was it was a long time ago and um, it, it just it's a really wonderful track. And mm. actually, a little secret, The Blue Sun is one of John Jenkins' favorite songs of mine from the 90s for some reason. Oh. Uh, well, yeah. we can listen because you like it, don't you, Dawes? Oh, I love it. Yes, it's a lovely, it's a lovely track. Oh, yes. Thank you. My that's, goodness. That's, that's why I left it till last, you know. Really yeah. awful, but <laughs> I don't know. You know what the hawk is. He's a crazy guy. But... Uh, well, look, we'll leave you alone now, David. Lady Hawk and I wish you every success uh, for the forthcoming Digital Only album, etc. And have a great time. And uh, obviously, uh, give our regards to Peccary Music and to John Jenkins. Yeah. And uh, we're going to ask you, have you got a closing comment to all the thousands and thousands of listeners out there, please, <laughs> David? <laughs> well, I a closing comment for you. I just I want to thank you for having me on the show again. You two are delightful. <laughs> um, what you were doing and getting this kind of alternative new age electronic music out into the world every week is just incredible and uh, it's an honor to be on and it's so wonderful that there's people out there listening uh, to my music <laughs> so thank you so much you're very welcome David I'm going to leave uh, the up-tempo blue sun playing in the background but thank you David I have a quick word with you off air but thank you David helping thank there you David you thank you David thank Bye-bye. you cheers thank you bye bye